Max. It's so hot out here. <gasps> Max. Hey, buddy. Hi, Max. <gasps> Good boy. Hello, chaps. Wolfgore here. Coming at you from the farm, aka my second job, which some of you have probably heard about on stream. Um, yeah, I'm on my lunch break, and I've been wanting to make another video like this for a while. And, uh, ooh, there's a bug on my leg. Not the creepy, creepy kind, so it's okay. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to make another video like this for a while, but just been, uh, busy, busy. I'm sure y'all know how it is. So in the last video like this, uh, we were talking about my last job, which was at a restaurant, and I kind of showed you that place a little bit. And I touched on a subject of my, uh, my old career job that I had for almost 10 years, and, uh, that I had lost that. I, uh, I started this YouTube channel right when I lost that job. And, uh, I mentioned in the video that I would, uh, I would explain that in another video if somebody wanted to see, and I did get a few a few awesome chaps who uh, wanted to know what happened, and I kind of, uh, I gave an explanation of that story on stream a few weeks back, but I still wanted to make a video about it just, uh, just to kind of uh, get it off my chest. It's, uh, it's actually very therapeutic making these videos. It's nice to kind of talk this stuff out and uh, just kind of work through it in that way. It's much cheaper than a, than a therapist. <laughs> Well, I just want to say at the start of this that this isn't the happiest of stories, and I know that's kind of like a rule on YouTube is you have to always be in a good mood and always be talking about something positive and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's my fucking channel, so I'm going to make a video about whatever I want. So what actually was my last job? Um, I was working at a grocery store in my hometown for almost 10 years, and I started out there bagging groceries as a courtesy clerk, and uh, I worked my way up through the ranks. I went over to food service. I worked in the deli for almost four years. I was the assistant manager. I, uh, I hated it. <laughs> Working in food service sucks. Uh, it's, it's sort of like a thing in grocery stores. Um, if you happen to work in one or if you haven't, uh, the deli is kind of like the, the shit department based on all my experience with all the, the grocery store clerks I've known and I've known the better part of a thousand. Yeah, so I was working as a uh, like assistant manager in the deli for like four years, and that was great, but I knew I needed to uh, to do something else because I just, uh, food service, uh, it, gets, it gets old quick. Yeah, so I decided I needed to uh, go for a better department, so I ended up working in the dairy box, uh, basically working in a giant refrigerator all day, stocking refrigerated products, and I did that for quite a few years. I was the, uh, I guess the assistant manager, I was the manager on the weekends, you know, I did ordering and that kind of stuff, manager-y type stuff. But uh, I was still making, you know, just a little bit over minimum wage for uh, probably the first six, seven years of my, my time there. And uh, I was doing checking work, you know, a front-end checker, like, part of the time for quite a few years. And uh, finally, we got a new store director um, after... <laughs> Uh, after this one guy left who'd been there for years and years and he'd been promising me, you know, a real management position for years and years and years and it never happened and I was so crushed when he left because he'd been making all these promises for like, you know, five, six years and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this guy just left and now I have to start from square one <laughs> with a new store director and I'm no closer to having a real well-paying management position than I ever was. But as it turned out, the new lady... Um, I'm not going to use anybody's real names in this, but let's just call her Happy. The new lady, Happy, was uh, super awesome. A uh, really hardworking, driven, amazing woman. Uh, absolutely loved her. Great leader. And uh, before long, she recognized my work ethic. She recognized that, you know, I did a lot for this store. And, uh, you know, I was, I was going above and beyond based on what I was being paid. And she, uh, she decided to promote me to... A head clerk, which is basically a, a head checker, and it it's a job that actually pays well. That's that's what really counted there, was that it paid like over twenty dollars an hour, and I was like, oh my god, I was so happy to finally have a decent paying job, and it's the only time in my life I've ever had a decent paying job, and uh, like an idiot, I went out and bought a new car. So yeah, everything was going absolutely great. You know, I was achieving my goals. I was finally getting into upper management, making the money I wanted to make, doing the things I wanted to do. And then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Not really. Um, the store director quit out of the blue right before the holidays. And this was pretty crushing. A store director is the store director. 
you know, in name for a reason. They direct the whole store. And going into the holiday season at a grocery store, it's the busiest time of the year. It gets really wild. So this was pretty bad for me and the other upper managers. So basically, we didn't just get a new store director. Basically, the assistant store director, the second in command, moved into the first command place, second in command, or the, uh, the OTL at the time, moved into the second command place. So everybody just got bumped up, basically got a battlefield promotion. And uh, there was no clear choice specifically who for who was going to replace the OTL, who was now the acting assistant store director. And I was like, hey, I'm your guy. You know, I've wanted to be an OTL for years. I've been working with the OTL. You know, I, I'm, I'm ready. Put me in, coach. And they did. And they came back to me and they were like, hey, you know, we talked to the district supervisor, one of the big head honchos. And he was like, yeah, you're in. You know, go do it. Go be the, uh, go be the operations team leader. And I did it. And uh, we got through the holiday season. Uh, we all were working, you know, 50 plus hours a week. It was a very, very hard, stressful time. And at this time, I'm, how do I even jump into this? So all things considered at this time, it really doesn't sound that bad, you know, um, at least we were figuring things out. But something started happening to me in the form of seizures that I still have no explanation for. Um, but I started having seizures basically out of the blue and my health just got taken away from me overnight. I went from a healthy, very fit 165 pound man to 130 pound feeling like I was dead every day. Just something was very wrong with my health and it just happened overnight. It was just, my health was taken away from me. And when your health gets taken away from you, as they say, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. I can attest to that being a very, very true thing. <laughs> that that phrase rings true with me since I've experienced it. When you, you can't understand, unless you've lost your health, how shitty it is to lose it. Because it's not just that your health is gone, it's the depression and the hardships that come with losing your health. Psychologically, it's just as hard as you as whatever's going on with your body. So, yeah, the first time I had a seizure, I had to go to the hospital because I was freaking out and I didn't know what was happening. And I got a huge medical bill from that. And I'm still making minimum payments on that. Just trying to get that paid off sometime in the next 10 fucking years, apparently. And, uh, yeah, so my health just really started declining like crazy fast. Like I, and as I said, you know, I still don't know why. Yeah, so once I started losing my health, everything just went downhill from there. I really just kind of lost my way. I felt like death every day at work and I was just working too much and I knew I needed a break. I needed to talk to my doctor and figure out what was going on. And all I asked for was, hey, I want to take my paid vacations. You know, I had several banked, several weeks of paid vacation banked and I'd never once in my career there had trouble taking my paid vacations. But as soon as I started, you know, expressing these concerns to upper management, things just started to seem off. Like the way that they would talk to me was like cool and disconnected. And I was just like, what the heck guys, like something's going on with me. I'm not feeling right. Like you can see that I'm losing weight. Like, I don't know what you think is going on. I'm not trying to go out on disability. I just want to take my paid vacations. Is that so difficult? And right around this time, the new store director came in. So we all got bumped down to our original positions. And uh, let's call this lady unhappy. She was a snake in the grass. She was, for lack of a better word, pure evil. I don't know what precisely her problem was with me, uh, but everybody that was on that management team either got promoted or forced out. I was the latter half. And I guess, you know, she came in and she saw some sickly looking guy who was having some weird health problems and asking for time off. And maybe she just got the wrong idea. But one way or another, I ended up getting forced out of my job. Yeah, so I tried to take my uh, vacations for about two months. Um, and they just kept getting pushed off and rejected and stuff. And I was just like, what is going on? This is not the time for this. I need some time to myself. And all the while, the, uh, the attitude of, you know, the upper management team towards me was just getting like, cold and icy and like people weren't communicating with me like we were friends or co-workers anymore it was just like very disconnected and you know maybe this was all in my head maybe I was just going through such weird depression such a hard time in my life that I imagine all this but 
It certainly didn't feel that way, and the fact that I no longer have a job there, I think attests to the fact that there was something going on behind closed doors. And I'd seen people get forced out of that company since I started there, but I just never thought it would happen to me. Like, I was the golden child. I was the guy who started as a courtesy clerk, rose through the ranks, and knew that store like the back of my hand. You know, I bled a thousand times for that place. As I cried for that place. But I still got forced out at the end of the day, and I still don't really know why. But yeah, in early 2016, I finally got my two paid vacations and I, I took some time off. I went home and I took a long, hard look in the mirror and I was like, this place is quite literally killing me and I don't want to go back. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't commit to that initially. You know, I did continue to go in over the course of my vacation and the months to follow and talked with the upper management team about, you know, what can we do? Like, what's, I just need some fucking help here. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to turn my back on you guys, but I feel like this whole company has turned its back on me during one of the hardest times in my life. But, um, I just didn't get any support. And, uh, I ended up deciding to just not go back after my vacations were over because I didn't want to die of stress. You know, I knew that this place was killing me and maybe this was just the universe giving me some sort of sign that I needed to move on and do something else with my life. And I started my YouTube channel. In short, I lost my good job because I was having health problems and it was, it was a really hard time. But it did give me that nudge that I needed to start the YouTube channel that I'd always wanted to start and here we are. Um, it's been it's been a hard road since then. It's been a hard road. You know, I ended up working at that restaurant, which ended up closing, and then I was unemployed again, and then I found work at Starbucks, and I've been at Starbucks for almost a year now, and I'm, I'm currently looking for a, a better job, a higher paying job with more consistent hours so that I can stream more consistently for you guys, but yeah, it has been financial hell for almost two years now. It's also worth mentioning before I wrap this up on the brighter side of things that I am no longer having seizures. I haven't had one in over a year. Um, my doctor and I both agree that it's related to stress and not being in that super stressful environment has definitely been good for my health. I feel pretty darn healthy once again. Anyways, with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, despite its sort of uh, depressing nature, hit that like button for me. It does help the channel grow. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment with other uh, video d ideas you'd like me to make or any questions you have, things you'd like me to talk about, things you'd like to learn about my past. Um, I really enjoy making these types of videos and connecting with you guys in this way. So uh, yeah, leave me comments down below. Um, if you do want to support the channel, um, I hate, I, uh, I feel so weird, like, promoting this, but I do have a Patreon, um, I did make a Patreon for the channel, so if you did want to support the channel financially in that way, there are links in the banner of my YouTube channel, as well as links in the videos for all my social media in the description of all my videos, so if you wanted to support the channel that way, just kick me a little extra money, I'd certainly really appreciate it, but there is absolutely no pressure to do that, I'm a grown man, I can take care of myself, I, but it's, it's there if you want to, it's there if you want to, but I don't want you to feel any pressure. Simply by watching the video to this point, you are doing everything that I could hope to support the channel. So thank you guys so much, and uh, I'll see you next time. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. <gasps> hey chaps, this is Max. This is my buddy. This is my work buddy. Oh, isn't he so cute? Oh. Max, it's so hot out here. <laughs> he knows the phone out of my hand. That's Max, chaps. Say bye, Max. Bork, bork.